Good morning, and welcome to our celebration of the Eucharist. We also welcome any visitors to our parish. Today is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time and All Saints Day. We offer today's Mass for the repose of the soul of Myrna Kanegi. Please join in singing our entrance hymn, 607. Sing with all the saints in glory, 607. Well, we, before we begin Mass, I just want to uh, emphasize uh, and, of course, acknowledge and thank uh, uh, especially uh, Catholic daughters and uh, the Altar Society who came in uh, uh, yesterday or the day before. As all these days start merging. It was yesterday, was it? And completely sanitized all the pews. Uh, so uh, with uh, the funeral of uh, uh, Sutton, uh, we, we was a, it was a packed church. It really was. But I just want to emphasize that the pews have been completely sanitized as well as downstairs. So uh, you are invited after Mass uh, for a little uh, fellowship uh, uh, with uh, coffee and a cake and cookies. And of course there is the grab and go. Uh, again, thank you Catholic Daughters for thinking about all these different aspects of, of uh, this time of coronavirus. And as you can tell by my uh, voice, uh, it looks like I pick up the cold on Friday. And so over an abundance of caution, I went ahead to test to make sure and uh, the rapid test shows that it isn't coronavirus, thanks be to God. Uh, but uh, over another abundance of caution, I think I'm going to take advantage of the grab and go. I don't want to take any chance of anybody getting sick. So do enjoy yourself. That, that's the important thing, especially during this time. We, we do need to have that fellowship. But uh, I'll be there in spirit with you after Mass today. So uh, uh, do, do feel comfortable to come on downstairs. Uh, lastly, uh, before I begin, so uh, uh, we're prepared 
uh, I, I lean to the extraordinary minister. I think it'd be, a, again, on the, on the side of caution. Uh, I will not distribute communion uh, today, so I'll need uh, three extraordinary ministers to uh, serve communion. So come on up, whoever's not around. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have grace in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have heard, through my heart, through my heart, through my emotions and in my heart. Wherefore I ask the blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, we pray for a peace of the Lord. May Almighty God have peace in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our last. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. As we join the world ear church, we gather with all the church of heaven as we join the praying for church suffering as we now sing together to give glory to God. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, 
who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we have put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he found, founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, one whose heart is clean who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that all your He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior, such as the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that all your A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, or we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him, makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the 
sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are they when you, uh, you are when they persecute you and when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for the re for your reward will be great in heaven. The gospel of the Lord. It's interesting when um, you, you probably write across this once or twice yourself uh, uh, with uh, any uh, friends who are, are non-Catholic, uh, and, and it comes to this question of the saints. Uh, I, I run into this uh, when uh, you have ministerial meetings and have uh, those who are of different denominations uh, talk about the saints, especially uh, their their problem with Mary. You know, they have this kind of this. Mm, you know, I just don't understand you Catholics. Uh, I need to go to God. I just go directly to Jesus. I, I don't go through saints. God doesn't need the saints. I, I just go directly to Jesus. And they're really often surprised when I say, you know, you're absolutely right. God doesn't need the saints. God doesn't need the saints. You're right. Well, they, they kind of just step back and go, whoa, so uh, you, you agree with uh, the premises of the Protestant church? And he says, well, in a way, yes, you're right. God doesn't need anything. But God wants the saints. That's the difference. God wants the saints. He doesn't need the saints. He wants the saints. And of course, just as we remember yesterday, I mean, last week, last Sunday, with the gospel of Jesus reminding us of what the great commandment is, he says that the second one is as important as the first. You love, must love your neighbor as yourself. And we have to remember that those who are in heaven still have the same requirements of here on earth as it is in heaven, that they too want to love their neighbor as they do themselves, to have such great intercessors, those who literally stand before God in eternal bliss, and they look to us and, and pray for us and, and help us along the way in, in our pilgrim church as we're trying to make our way to heaven. And of course, the way that we do this is we hear what Jesus tells us in today's gospel remind ourselves that it is not just enough to say, Jesus is my personal Lord and Savior and I'll be saved. Jesus teaches us something quite different. As a matter of fact, it's what his teachings are with the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount or the Beatitudes is really what separates us from any other religion of this world, any other kind of uh, 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 philosophy that you find in the world, because Jesus reminds us that what we have to have is not only faith, but action before behind our faith, what the Baltimore Catechism would teach us, faith and good works. You have to have both in order to find salvation. And of course, this is the word, what blessed means. Uh, we hear that, you know, blessed are they, blessed are they. Blessed, if you can bring it out of the Old English into the Greek and into the Latin, it means saints or the saintly. Saints are the ones who are poor in spirit. So so think of, as we are remembering these ghost stories, if you like, there's a reason why we have ghost stories during Halloween, because saints are what? People have died. And so we tell their stories. We want to tell the stories of, of these ghosts, of these saints, of these blessed ones. Now think of a blessed one who is poor in spirit. The one that comes to mind immediately to me is uh, St. Uh, Teresa of Calcutta, who recently declared a saint. And of course, there's a, an example of one who would say, no, it isn't going to be about me. I'm going to go out into that world. I'm going to go down the steps. And I'm going to go into the slums and the gutters. And look for Jesus. Look for those individuals that so desperately need Jesus in their lives. And I can bring Jesus to them as they are reminding me as a nun and as a religious and as a human being that Jesus is in our neighbors and that we want to take for them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And of course, another one that seems so contradictory, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who mourn. And as we're going through the difficulty we've had with Sutton and the uh, Sisniak, uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, Sisniak family, that we, we want to remember those uh, of our families who have, have gone, especially uh, with going through this coronavirus excuse me, uh, that, that we want to remember to, that, that it's not enough. What we're going through here on earth isn't where it's going to stop. But rather, God is always reminding us, go through this because know that I'm never going to ask you to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. 
That's why we have Jesus on the crucifix, looking down at us, saying, I know, I know, come and join with me, be with me. I will make sense of it, because anything in this world just can't explain it, but I can make it, for you will be comforted. Now, of course, the other ghost story that we have is, I always remind myself of blessed are those who mourn, of course, and we remember patron saints, but in particular, one saint, and that is St. Lawrence. Now, I, rem I know St. Lawrence so well, because up in Hoven, the uh, church was uh, modeled after the uh, church that was in Cologne, the church dedicated to St. Lorenzo, or St. Lawrence. And uh, so when... Uh, the, uh, the Germans came up to the northern area there, they wanted a little, bring a little bit of home with them, a little bit of, of Germany with them. And they built uh, Hoven, the church in Hoven, after uh, that church in Cologne. So you go there, and you will find a statue on the, uh, on the uh, right side or left side, if you're looking at the, uh, the, uh, the left side. You'll see the statue of St. Lawrence. And of course, he's dressed in white, the, the, uh, the sign of the saints. And he has a palm branch in his hand, re representing that he was... Uh, killed by, by mar martyrdom. And of course, the other one is the instrument of his execution. So if those who don't know St. Lawrence, he has in his hand a, a spit, a, a, a grill. He's holding on to a grill. Why? Because he is, uh, his martyrdom was to be uh, roasted alive. He was put over as a, a spit and roasted alive. And of course, what gave him this, this horrible way of dying that God called him to? He was the deacon of the church. He was uh, serving the Pope, and as deacon, he was responsible for the treasuries of, of the treasure of the, of the church. And of course, when the Pope was arrested, they killed him three, uh, the, uh, the Pope three days before they killed Lawrence. But they went to Lawrence and says, okay, you saw what we just did to your Pope. Now, if you can bring us all the money that, uh, that you're responsible for, I'll let you go. And of course, St. Lawrence said, well, I need three days. I need three days before I can do that. So, okay, you're granted, but do realize if you don't come back, uh, it, it will be not good for you. So he comes back after three days, and he brings with him a widow, a poor man, and an orphan. And he says to the judge, these are the treasures of the church. For those three days, he went out and gave everything away of the church that he had and distributed amongst the poor, the widows, and, and uh, also the orphans. Now, of course, the judge thought he was being insulted, so he decided, well, I'll show you, and that's how he came up with, with the worst kind of, of torture that uh, could, be, could be thought of by the judge, and that is being roasted alive. Now, of course, one thing that we see with this man who obviously knows what mourning is all about, he was on the spit, and of course, St. Lawrence is known as the, the patron saint of who? What do you think St. Lawrence is the patron saint of? Well, first off, he's the patron saint of cooks. Go figure that one out. He's the patron saint. But he's also the patron saint of comedians. The patron saint of comedians, really, there's a patron saint for everybody in the church. The patron saint of comedians, why? Because of the great one-liner he left this world with. And he looked at his executioners and he said, turn me over on this side, I'm done. And that's one thing we have to see. Even in when he is being tortured and, and being grilled alive, he still had the joy even though he was mourning, the joy of realizing that he was going to be able to be in heaven soon. Now, how do we know the last words of St. Lawrence? Most people will get this. The reason is because the executioners were there. They realized what they were doing to him. They realized how horrible of a death they were giving this man. And yet this man had such great joy in giving his life over for Jesus Christ that they said, you know what? I want what he has. Whatever he has, I want. Those very executioners became Christian because of the witness that St. Lawrence had. And because of that, we know the last words of St. Lawrence. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And of course, we have another blessed. Uh, yesterday, we had the uh, beatification, uh, not the uh, canonization, but the beatification of another great man. And you know who that is? Very good. It was Father McGivney, who is the founder of the Knights of Columbus. So we rejoice with the Knights of Columbus now and Catholic daughters, because Catholic daughters and Knights of Columbus are of a common root. So Father McGivney, this one man, this man, when I was back in Connecticut, I was able to go to his, 
a church uh, that he was baptized and he was a, he was a common man he was he went to work when he was i think he was 10 years old and and uh, worked as a tinsmith and in the factories and and realizing how desperate the situation were for especially the irish immigrants and the italian immigrants that he founded an organization first off recognizing how important it was to take care of widows and orphans he set up an insurance company and on top of that to be reminding the, the men who were living these very hard lives, to remind them, no, there is a dignity that you have. There is a dignity that we all possess. We are the knights and ladies of the kingdom of God. And as a result, he did establish the Knights of Columbus. And of course, we remember this in particular because just recently we see how the Knights of Columbus continue to be persecuted with the uh, nomination of one of the justices and, and one of the senators uh, ridiculing this man because he was a member of the Knights of Columbus, giving some crazy impression that the Knights of Columbus was some kind of fascist, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, white supremacist, uh, hating women group. It just shows you how often we hear Jesus again, even in the 21st century, saying, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. So we do join with the Knights of Columbus, so through the intercession of Father McGivney, that, that our country, the United States, especially as we're going through this election year, to find that, that harmony, that peace, and especially to, to pray, as, uh, as Father McGivney did, to reject our culture of death. And boy, did Father McGivney understand what a culture of death was, where, where we have individuals thinking that they can, they can look at, at another human being as, as a simple number that is on a, on a spreadsheet somewhere, and not remembering the dignity that is ours, given to us by God, and being formed in his image. He would always remind ourselves, even now in the 21st century, that we need to reject our culture of death and to embrace the gospel of life. These saints are here with us all the time to help us along the way. Matter of fact, one of the ideas that we have in building this church, this church that was built 100 years ago by your great-grandparents and your grandparents, is a constant reminder that when we walk in this church, this is where heaven and earth meet. This is the threshold of heaven and earth. And that the saints sit with us in the pews right next to us. As a matter of fact, there are so many angels and saints with us at this very moment that there's not enough room for all of us. They're going outside the doors. And of course, we represent their presentation to us, their, their presence with us by the stained glass windows. How many of you really go by these stained glass windows and, and remind ourselves we are in heaven. We are right here at the threshold of heaven. And we have the saints looking at us on the side here, giving us a, a glimpse of what heaven is going to be looking like. These are windows not to inspire us with its beauty, but rather windows to remind us what heaven is. We're looking at heaven through these windows. And of course, the saints are here looking down at us and saying, how's it going? I'm here, I'm sticking my head in the window here on earth to say, how's it going with all of you here on earth? And to know that these saints are with us to be able to make intercession for us, to, to help us along the way, to inspire us by their lives. And this is why we do tell the ghost stories on hollow, All Hollows Eve. We remind ourselves of the lives of the saints and bring them into our, into our presence and, and to say to them, you did it, you went through these difficulties, and you've made sainthood. Help me, help me that one day I will have a stained glass window depicting me as well to remind other people that there is something greater than this world, the kingdom of God, and to be able to demonstrate the dignity that is the human person. And lastly, the other thing that we are celebrating today of all saints, if you really look at all the quote-unquote canonized saints that we have a calendar, there's about all, about I think it's less than 700 people that we recognize in the, in the calendar. But there's a myriad of other saints as well that we don't even know who they are. And we come together today to join Church Triumphant 
all those angels and saints in heaven to be able to recognize that they are present with us and we recognize them for, for their accomplishment of achieving the ultimate prize and that is eternal life in heaven with God. So now what I ask you to do, especially as I do talk to my other uh, ministers and uh, my Protestant friends who do have a problem with the saints to, to help you in this conversation as well, I always try to approach it this way. Do you believe in angels? You know, and, and almost all will say, of course I believe in angels. You have Michael and Gabriel, Raphael, they're in the Old Testament. I will always remind them, well, well where are these angels? Where, where, where do they live? Where do they exist? And of course, the immediate response, well, they, they're in heaven. They're in heaven with God. He says, you know, they're in heaven with God, so uh, they don't worry about us here on earth. Well, no, not of course not. You have Raphael, you have Gabriel going to Mary, so we know that they interact with us here on, in, here on earth as well and communicate us with the heavenly messages. You say, well, then if that's be the case, then what about the holy ones? What about the saints? Do you think they're just sitting in heaven, just standing around? No. They're along with the angels, and that's why we do recognize angels themselves as Saint Michael, Saint Raphael, Saint Gabriel. They are in the presence of God, constantly making intercession and prayers on behalf of us here on earth. And if the angels are doing it, how much more would the saints be doing it as well? So we do join the saints today, and then of course tomorrow, the church pilgrim, we who are on earth, and church triumph, we pray for the church suffering. And those are, of course, the souls in purgatory. Now, one of the questions that will usually come to me is, uh, well, hold it now, Father. Uh, uh, really, uh, what about those individuals that are saints? They made it. And I'll give you an example. My, my grandmother, I, I just know she was a very holy woman. She received the last rite. She received the apostolic blessing. You know, uh, well, do we, do we pray for them? And the answer is, of course we do. Of course we want to pray for everybody. We're, we're not absolutely sure, so let's not, not uh, take any chances. We want to come to pray, come together to pray for all the poor souls. And of course, to remember the most important thing, prayer is never wasted. Never wasted. So when I come together tomorrow as we're praying for our, our faithful dead, especially the poor souls, we know that if they are sharing the bliss of eternal life, they take our prayers on All Souls Day and apply those prayers that make intercession for those individuals that, that have been forgotten about, the poor souls in purgatory that nobody's even praying for. And we join with the saints and pray for these individuals who can do nothing on their own. They don't have a body. They can't do spiritual and corporal works of mercy. And we join in our prayers to help them along the way, remembering the most important part of All Souls Day, that what is at our time, when we are called from this world to join in the eternal life, that they're going to be there praying for us as well, just as we were loving our neighbor as ourselves, praying for the poor souls. We know that they're going to be making intercession for us when it is our turn, and we need their help to help us along the way for a heavenly reward. So a great tradition, and it is so important that we do go out of our way to make sure that we are praying with the saints, recognizing the saints that are with us at this very moment, those that are know, uh, known and unknown, knowing that we have such great intercessors, such great friends, who we call the blessed, the saints of heaven. So often we uh, go through the Nicene Creed, which we're about ready to re uh, recite, and it's like a machine gun. Oh, 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 oh. You know, we just say the words, and we can get the words, and we're deep behind the words. Be very careful, if you will, remembering the last phrases of the creed we are about to testify to. Let us stand together in faith, joining the angels and the saints as we proclaim, I believe in one God.
Good and gracious God, bless our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the bishops in union with him. May they be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, eternal high priest, you have committed to your priests the ministration of your sacraments. Help them to do their part in your work with the unfailing gladness of genuine charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in thanksgiving for all the sacramental grace we have received from you through the consecrated hands of your priests, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Son of the living God, you have commanded us to celebrate the Eucharistic meal in remembrance of you. Enrich your church with priests who will offer the worthy celebration of these mysteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Granted by the prayers of Mary, Queen of all saints, our citizens will elect leaders who will protect all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Physician, you give an eternal remedy to a pledge and a pledge of resurrection to those who worthily eat your Eucharist. Grant health to sick and the real hope to sinners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, we remember those who have gone before us those who are in our book of remembrance, those who have died in the past year. May they rest in your peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, again, it is a great privilege when you have called us here to give you praise and worship. We have responded to your call. Now train you in faith to present these petitions to you, to our mediator, our master, our Lord, and our true president, our eldest brother, Jesus Christ, now lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, 589, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, 589.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O oh Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just as we and our salvation also should never rest and be thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and Lord God. For today, by your gifts, we celebrate the festival of your city, heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. For it's her we see her releasing as pilgrims to Jerusalem by faith, rejoicing. In the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, whom you give us in our frail and full strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels, as we with one voice of praise we acclaim. you, therefore, most merciful Father, in your humble prayer and devotion to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, as you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you, Jesus, for your holy Catholic Church, we please to grant your peace, to guard, to light, and govern it throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Lord, and Donald, our Bishop, and all those who hold thee to the church, to the truth, hold on the Catholic, hope and on. Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, those of our friends and family. We remember you in this church for the families who have lost our loved ones uh, uh, during this past year. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you with every offering, your sacrifice of praise, or the offer for themselves and all the things to them. The redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well being. May their homage be due to the will of God may be preserved. In communion with those men, for those whose memory is regenerated, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph and Spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Apollo, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Socrates, John and Paul, Marcus, and Damian, all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers that all things be defended by your protecting power. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our sins, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and demand that we be delivered from eternal damnation. Now from us the thought of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he was bread in his holy and venerable hands. For thy great gift to you, O oh God, and Almighty Father, 
thing is that you know, uh, these broken bread and gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he looked at his precious chalice and his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving him thanks, he said to us, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only favor in my sin. I do uh, see a couple of new faces, so hopefully they don't feel uncomfortable. What we do now is uh, we receive a communion on the two on the side aisles, and then we use the main aisle to return to the pews. So uh, uh, they keep two side aisles. And like I say, uh, sometimes I do have to be told uh, with the overabundance of caution, uh, I'll have a, a short communion statement to give you. Thank you. Thank you.
We have a, uh, another uh, death, uh, Bill uh, Eckhart, who's in uh, uh, Wessington Springs. He passed away coronavirus last week. Uh, so at 8 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning in Wessington Springs, we're going to have a special mass for him. And of course, uh, All Souls Day is tomorrow as well. I changed the schedule from last week because uh, we're going to take uh, Bill up to uh, Miller at 11 for the committal service. And, then I'll come back. So Mass uh, to change a little bit. It's in this week's bulletin, though. Uh, All Souls Day Mass in uh, uh, Wessing Springs is 5.15, and I think it's 6.30. I think it's 6.30 or 7. Get the missile. I mean, get the bulletin. We'll have it here. We'll be using the main body of the church here for All Souls Day. Uh, and I do, again, encourage you, if you have uh, little slips of paper, uh, to put down your loved ones. Uh, who passed away, and we'll make sure we'll put their names here at the altar throughout the month of November. And, of course, uh, over here on St. Joseph's altar, quite appropriately, he's the patron saint of those who, uh, who are dying and uh, uh, died. Uh, their book of memories is over there. What I will be doing is putting the book probably towards the back or up front here with a candle burning. So if anybody would like to write down uh, somebody's name as well, so we remember them for posterity's sake, uh, that book will be available and a constant reminder that we are supposed to pray for those who have died. And don't forget as well, uh, uh, Catholic Daughters are downstairs with uh, 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 coffee and donuts. Uh, feel free to go on down and a little bit of fellowship. The Lord knows we, we need that now with this coronavirus going on. And they have a, a, a grab and go too. They've set that downstairs as well. So if you'd like to Take, take this, something home with you. It's the option I'm going to go with as I get, get over this cold, but uh, do feel free to come on downstairs and share in that fellowship. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing and after trope will say, Amen. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who have caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Breathe through their intercession from the present life and form by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. So that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where holy church rejoices that says uh, that her children are admitted to perpetual peace and company of the citizens of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Fed by the word of God and the bread from heaven, let us go forth singing our closing hymn, 708, for all the saints, 708.